Aloha and welcome to Slow Motion Disc Golf's Analyze Your Game. Today we're doing the pro segment with my buddy Peter McBride and I'll let him introduce himself. Hi, I'm Peter McBride, PDJ number 34463. I've been playing since late 2007 and I haven't really stopped since. I, the game is a lot of fun and I'm sponsored by uh, Legacy Discs and Voodoo Disc Golf Bags and Slow Motion Disc Golf. So today we're going to go into Peter's throwing mechanics and we're specifically looking at his mid-range. So I'll let him get a little bit more into his mid-range. So I like to throw one mold of mid-range. I only have, I have four ghosts in my bag. They, uh, they range from in plastics and uh, varying degrees of, uh, of stability. So I really like to throw, uh, let the disc do the work on the angles I like to throw. So I have an understable, understable protege one that I can hyzer flip and get good anti lines. And then I have a more stable protege one that's pretty straight. And then a icon one that's almost as straight as the yellow one but slightly different, uh, different shapes. And then a, a pinnacle uh, medium weight one that's nice and overstable. So that pretty much covers all of the mid-range shots I need in my bag. So there's your first pro tip from Peter McBride. Keep your discs the same, change stability over time so you feel consistent, you feel confident, and you know what your disc is throwing. So, like you said, if you like your discs to shape the shot, so you do really throw on the same angle and that stability varies where your disc lands, or do you sometimes vary angles depending on height and hand height? I definitely vary my angles, but most of the time I like to let the disc do the work. It, uh, it simplifies everything and I, uh, I just feel more confident in having, the, having a similar throw every single time. Nice. Well, you heard it there. Peter likes consistency, so let's look at his mid-range throwing mechanics. We're going to go into Slow Motion Disc Golf's five phases of movement, frame by frame analysis. We will be looking at the initial foot contact, the cross step, the reach back, the hit point, and the follow through for each one of his discs and then we'll have an overlay comparison how Peter varies within his mechanics by all four throws. So let's take a look at that. First up are the original and slow motion simultaneous video comparisons. Each video is synchronized at the initial foot contact phase and timing variability can be seen after this phase. During the five phases of movement, we are comparing joint variability across four throws at the same point in time, allowing us to analyze a player's mechanical variation. Here we have a comparison of the disc flight path during the five phases of movement. Ghosting allows for a comparison of relative joint timing and body mechanics in real time. Now that we've looked at Peter's throwing mechanics and throwing variability, let's get into our pro tip segment to really understand Peter and see what keeps him competing at the top of the game. Mid-rangers are a big part of my game. They, uh, I rely
rely on them heavily, especially on wooden courses, and they are a very uh, good gauge on if you have smooth mechanics or if you have poor disc selection. And anytime you try to throw a mid-range over 200 feet, say, the, uh, the disc will show you your poor mechanics or your poor disc selection by hysering or flipping too much, and it is a very good tell of uh, if you have smooth mechanics or not. So you heard it here first, if you want to improve your game, make sure you throw slower, improve mechanics, and then work your way up to distance drivers. Thank you for watching Slow Motion Disc Golf and for watching Team Slow Motion Disc Golf. We hope to bring you the best research in the game. Aloha.